Hey guys, are you trying to learn how to set bank posts and get them big old catfish? Well, this is a show you want to watch, Bank Pose 101, where I'm going to teach you exactly what you need to know how to set bank posts. We're going to learn how to do it on foot, and we'll learn how to do it on boat. Keep watching. All right, guys, welcome to Big Muddy Catfishing with your host, Mr. Bank Pole Joe. As you can see, what we're doing is we are looking at my bait tanks. We are actually changing them over. I had a lot of fish die off from the bait tank, so we're going to have to put this filter back on. The reason why I originally took it off is because you only get this little short black piece that goes into it, and it's made for a regular aquarium. So that black piece does not go all the way down to the bottom of this. Um, so what I did is I cut a piece of PVC pipe that was just long enough to get to the bottom and then let me show you I took the so dirty I took the filter piece that is normally down on the bottom of the tube off and I'm putting it in here but it does not fit like this, where it, like it should normally sit. So what I decided to do is just stick it inside it. That should do about the same thing. So that's what it looks like on the inside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this to inside of there and fill my filter up and run my filter and see how it runs, see if I can get it to do what I want it to do. So hopefully... This will help clean and filter the water more because that filter is supposed to be able to filter 50 gallons. It's just that this is a trash can and it's no way it's going to get to the bottom unless I extend the pipe. So that's what we got here. I can actually measure that out. I didn't measure it so I can tell you all about how far I did it. Hold on just a second. Okay, if you look at it from where the pipe goes in. And what the added PVC I added, I added probably about a foot and a half, roughly. That should get you down to the bottom of one of these brute trash cans are pretty doggone close. And we're going to run this and we're going to see how it runs. We're going to do a water, water test and see how the water is because I did put some aquarium salt in this water to help condition this water and also... I added the start right to it to get the chlorine out of it and I've let it run for a couple of days to try to get everything prepped. So we're going to run the strip through here and we're going to see what the strip says. So just hold on just one second. Okay guys, here you go. This is a, I'm using the Tetra 501 Easy Strips. You can get these at Walmart. It's going to test your water levels, your nitrites and your nitrates. Everything you need to get your pH balance together. So basically you want to make sure that you take care of these bait fish that you're keeping. Don't want them dying off like me. Um, had this problem before last year, so we're going to try to fix this. Otherwise, we're going to have to move these uh, bluegill to the deep freeze and figure out a way to turn the deep freeze into an actual real bait tank. But the bait tanks real, still work. It's just I'm not running a filter on those bait tanks, so I have to do water changes, and that's the problem, is when you get lots of bluegill in the water, they do dirty it up every couple of days, and so they're running me through a lot of the start right stuff, so I wanted to see if I can extend the life of my tank. This is aquarium salt that I bought. You can get this at uh, PetSmart. It promotes fish health, improves gill function. Let's see. Benefits says it provides essential electrolytes for freshwater fish need to reach peak uh, coloration and vitality. Improves gill function, reduces stress, facilitates osmoregulation, and promotes disease recovery. When you use this, is setting up a freshwater aquarium or a fishbowl and changing water and treating fish disease. 
you add one rounded tablespoon for every five U.S. gallons. So I put basically put, how many did I end up putting in there? So basically I ended up putting 10 tablespoons in that 50 gallon uh, brute tank. And so hopefully this will help keep these fish alive. And we're, like I said, we're going to run the test strips. So you guys can see what those look like and how that goes. Just one second. So here I got my test strip. You take it out. Y'all can't see that real good, but it does have colors, different colors on it. So I'm going to swipe it through here. Couple, Give it a couple swipes. They say after about 60 seconds, you should know exactly what's going on in your water. So while we do that, we're going to go ahead and pick up our tube and we're going to put our tube down into the hole. Snaps in and it should, should sit down in there right. Now guys, now this brute tank is of course not made to hold this filter so you do have to like manipulate the rubber a little bit by bending it okay now I got everything in there and in order to start this you got to put water in it and get it going and I also got to plug it in so as you can see it does go down there to the bottom so we're going to plug it in and then we're going to add some water inside the filter till you fill it all up and it starts spilling out and then it kicks on there you go. It makes a real loud noise, guys. If your water is running low on there, that's how you know you need to add more water inside your filter. That filter does not just pick up water on its own. It starts, but it will not fill up unless you fill it. So for the guys that don't know that, that's what you got to do. So we'll get this done, then we'll put the top on it, and we'll see what it looks like. And then I'll show you guys me putting the fish in. I'll be back. All right, guys, we're back. Let's show you what everything looks like. I did finish the tank. I do got a fish down there at the bottom, as you can see. And the pipe is extended. And we got it running. It's not running near as hard as it was earlier, but it is pumping the water through there. Evidently, the extending the pipe is a little harder for it to get the water up there, but eventually, get up there like it's supposed to. It's flowing quite strong earlier. I don't like taking this lid off because it's spooky. And they jump out of the tank. So that's why I made the lid like I did. So that way I can just simply open it up. Look inside there. So what we're going to do is I completely emptied the other tank that I have out and we're going to put this together piece by piece so I can show you exactly what's on this tank to keep it going guys and you watch my bait take video which I'll put in the link up in the your upper left hand corner so you can see um, how to make one of these and we're going to put one of these together and show you exactly what I got going on and this one will have a filter so if you look over here, I already did pre-cut this, so I pre-cut the back of this lid. This is where the filter part is going to be sitting at. And then I cut the opening so you can get down there and dip your fish or add fish if you need to. Because every time you open this top all the way, especially at night, if the fish have been sitting there pretty quiet and still all day, they will get nervous, jump around, hit the walls, jump out of the water, that sort of thing. Of course, you need your start right, like I showed you before. Conditions of water, water maintenance. Usually, um, for that tank over there, I found out, I keep saying it's 50 gallons, but those brook trash cans only hold 35 gallons. So, basically, four catfuls of this should get you going. And then, of course, your aquarium salt. 
so you can promote that good fish health like I showed you before. And then some handy Velcro. Now, people will be like, why would you put Velcro inside your bait tank? But as you can see, it says it's water resistant and it has more holding power as it's pill and stick. Just clean the area, dry it up, peel it off, stick it on there, and 15 minutes is done. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these pieces and we're going to put these pieces on the bottom of the bait tank. We're going to put the soft Velcro part on the back of the air. I got some uh, rectangular air sto stones to go in the bottom of the bait tank. Uh, let's see if I can show you those. Something like this. So once we put these on, this is basically what's going on. I have these right here. So I'll add the strips onto those. And then I'm going to set one right there and one right there. So the bubbles are coming up and get that rotation going in the water. And then, because as you can see, this is where I have my holes for my air tubes to come in. And that'll be pretty much set up. And then I'll set the filter probably back here off the wall like I did that one. That way, you know, we get some good flow on here. And hopefully we get everything going. So we're going to go ahead and... Stick the Velcro down, wait 15 minutes, and then we'll finish putting the rest together. So stick with me, guys, and we'll be back. Alrighty, guys. As you can see, my little Velcro strips are in, and they have dry in 15 minutes. Put the other part on the back of here, so stick it down here. And keep it in there. Run that pipe, that uh, tubing along the side. That way that tubing's not just hanging around down in there. As you can see, that's my setup. Well, as you can see, it didn't stick. Let me re-stick that. Fix that and then let it dry. Okay, we repress that down. We're gonna let that sit overnight and dry. Hopefully, in by the morning, it sits real good. As you can see, there's the holes to give you a good idea. So what I'm hoping, guys, is the bubbles from this big one and the bubbles from the small one will come up and create a kind of like a rotation in the water. And then I'll have the filter dropping water down there. Keep that going. And hopefully... To have some nice happy fish. And that is Bank Pole 101 talking about bait tanks. Thanks for watching Big Muddy Catfishing, guys. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Comment below. Tell me what you think about my bait tanks. Any things you think I could make some changes. We'll see what we can do. I'll come back and show you guys uh, exactly what the bait tank looks like once I've got it dried and, put it, and water put in it. And we'll put some fish in that bad boy. Thanks for watching. Alright guys, just a real quick look at the finished product of what we did last night. We got the caps on. And we got the filters on the back. 
this one's not actually plugged in to run it, but had the Velcro on the bottom, as you can see. A nice airflow coming out of there. Hopefully, we got that convection going where it's getting like rotating down there. It looks like we got a good setup. This is the one that's got fish in it. And it looks like there's a dead one down there. I'm gonna have to pull him out. Might as well cut him up using for bait. But that's the setup, guys. Wire's not running very hard. May have to cut the pipe a bit shorter to uh, get a little bit more strength out of the motor. But all in all, this is a good setup. I believe it's going to work and keep the fish happy. So there you go. Big muddy catfish and live wells. Thank you for watching Bank Pole 101 with Big Muddy Catfishing, your host, Mr. Bank Pole Joe. Showing you how to set some bank poles. This is the first episode in this series. The next episode will be locations. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. Leave a comment. Share this video with a friend or two or find a video that you do like and share that with a friend or two. Let me know what you'd like to see. Y'all have a good day.